It's the Otter Task List. The Otter Task List includes The Mummy. QB. You see. Uh. Page 2. Dungeon Explorer. Cover graphics. Two bosses defeated. That's a gauntlet sort of game. Yo, Noid! Win the second pizza battle. Our games. There they are. What do you think? What do you think? Oh no, you're annoyed. This is Group L. Round two and three. We're doing both. The last two matches in the open side bracket of our tournament here. This is going to finish up round one. The last two missing. And we'll be able to take predictions on who's going to win this whole thing in the uh, single elimination brackets to be had after. Verifying, they are indeed the final two matches here, so they're wrapping it up today. Current score they've done one race, the current score is three block, two to a foul, and uh, alpha five and adamant tied, which means they both have one point. These are fresh challenges. They're ready to go. Are you guys ready to downgrade the music here? Hold on a second. I am allowing on the mummy one save state and I've advised the players to use it on stage two to save them bothering with a password system because they are going to soft lock. I guarantee it. This is 14's soundtrack, King of Fighters 14. One save state at the beginning of level 2 is my advice, because they can and will almost assuredly softlock this game. The game fact for this game suggests that you run around the entire level multiple times 
to work out the right solution because if you don't do it right, you're done. You're soft locked. As in, you can't even force a death. You have to restart. There's no timer. There's nothing. You are going to soft lock. I assure you. Uh, not unless you go in with the mindset of knowing exactly what to do. For mechanics that you don't know necessarily, you know. Just. Yeah. The countdown begins. We're gonna play the mummy in book color OST. And the clock is on. So again, we have Adam and Arkvile tied for third. Alpha five. Locks in the lead with three. Baha's two. Anybody's game between these two matches. That extra point really lights it up, too. The goal of the mummy is to collect all the items, open the door, and go through the door. Each of these characters has their own ability. The librarian has Dash. Uh, doesn't help much, but she's got it. They can hit select to open a map that shows them where stuff is. You use the tablets on this first puzzle area to open specific doors. Now... I don't know how to describe the gameplay, it's sort of like La Milana in a lot of ways. I don't think you can soft lock in La Milana though, so maybe not as well designed as that. The confusing thing about this is that it loops vertically. Uh, it's really bizarre. This library is cursed. <laughs> so you fall through the floor, you come out the ceiling, and vice versa. Uh, so you can just keep on going forever. The problem with soft locking occurs in level 2 and beyond where you have a limited supply of items. Like in this level you use some kind of contraption to open a specific door. Uh, it's some kind of key of sorts. It blows it up and then you can get through. Well, the next level has TNT, and you have just enough to do the job, so if you waste a single stick, you're done. And I can only imagine that the game gets worse from there. There's also no way to get yourself killed or anything, so... Players believe they soft locked on level one, and I don't know if you can. But you sure as hell could soft lock on stage two. I tried everything to work out a way to just take yourself out at least or something. Something. But uh I'm not sure that you can. There's only four buttons, so you would think I would have found a way to restart if there was one. You can take a death and that restarts it. But uh there's only a couple things that kill you and it's not <laughs> Ironically, the thing that kills you is the TNT that you need to beat the stage, so wasting it is the way out, and, uh, yeah. Nice torch. This doesn't bode well for our players if they're confounded by level 1, because level 2 is way worse. Adam and Arkvile's made it to stage two. They must collect eight bags of gold. Yeah. 
Yo, time fast. Thanks for the subs. EI and RM Rev. I know exactly what Foul needs to do to get up there. They're not soft locked, but it's something that um, they've ruined the ability to figure out basically for free. Um, Lock just did it. I'm assuming that you need to find Jonathan there to move on to the next level, but I'm not 100% about that. He's who you're playing in level 2. You need him for that. And I guess later you can switch characters, but not that I found. I wasn't allowed... Brendan Fraser is Rick, you find him in level 2. Uh, Jonathan is John Hanna. The other guy you probably don't remember too well from this movie because it's not uh, Brendan Fraser. <laughs> okay. I barely remember. Okay, Val has figured out the dark room. He's the final person to do it. Uh, you use the torch to light up that room to see the puzzle. You don't need to see it to do it, though. So they weren't soft-locked. Level 2 is actually capable of doing it, and um, I feel like since I've warned them so much about it, and even let them make a save state, we're gonna see people clear this, and I don't think we would have if I denied them that ability. People are gonna get knocked out of the bracket pretty fast because it is single elimination. We are done with double elimination brackets because they're just too big. Uh, I did it this way so that everyone got a chance to play three matches before the brackets. Now the brackets are serious business. Single elimination. We're gonna get through there really quickly compared to last time. We're like 70 or 80 percent done with the tournament now because of that. Val has made it to the final stage so that means everyone is on level 2 final stage. There's probably 300 stages in this. Uh, level 2 though. Everyone's here. You must use TNT to explode bricks. That's what they're for. You can only carry one at a time, I believe. You can get killed by it, which will reset your level. That's like the only way I found that you could actually die. I found out I could soft lock right here where Fowl is. I did it on purpose, just to test. And I was blown away by the fact that yes, indeed, I was soft locked. I can't get out of that pit if I do it that way. You cannot waste a single dynamite. I think you need every single one of them. No, this is Brendan Fraser's brother, or whatever. Uh, Rick, he's in this level. Brendan Fraser is who you rescue in level 2. I don't remember Jonathan at all. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I think Val has a soft lock. Yep, they have indeed. And they soft locked even harder. They've doubled down on soft locking this. <laughs> oh no. Adam, it's one bag away from victory. And he sees it. He knows where it's at. But can he get to it? Without TNT, I don't think he can. I wonder if there's any left. Eleven minutes left to figure this out. Adam, it looks like he's gonna do it. It looks like he's wrapping up. He's just double checking that he's in the right place here, and I think so. Yes, indeed, you can crawl, walk. That's the ticket. There it is. 
And final bag achieved. Just needs to find the exit now, and I don't think that's going to be the hard part here. Love to make challenges where I have to give them a paragraph of information and save state ability to be able to beat it. Adam has cleared it. The mummy is down. I was just confirming to Adamant that he is done. We can start Dungeon Explorer. I gave them directions on where to go in Dungeon Explorer. It's a bit open. More than it probably should be. Uh, the way they should go, the way he's going now, is through this dungeon, beat a boss, and then back at the start of this dungeon, you can go left if you want to, or you can go back up to town, and to an entirely different wrong town. I told them to go back to the start of this dungeon after they beat the boss, and head left through the dungeon some more, find another good dungeon to do, and then beat the boss there as well. That's the ticket. There might be another boss they can access, and if they do it that way, fine. Uh, I didn't find it. It's a very gauntlet sort of game. Gauntlet with bosses. Gauntlet with XP elements and leveling up. You can even play multiple players. I think five, maybe even. But you definitely can co-op this game. This is a turbo graphics game, and I wonder if it had the ability... I uh, probably did have multiple players at once on it. In the way that uh, the NES had a five-player hookup multi-tap thing. I wonder if it does have the ability to play five people. <laughs> I got fooled by this puzzle here. I thought I was soft locking a second game, but you can't soft lock it. It's Bull Beast! Can you beat Bull Beast? He's a jerk. They have five lives. For some reason, run is uh, res resurrect button. I don't know where their life counter is on screen. I don't think it is on screen. But they have five lives. Full Beast is really annoying. He shoots diagonally. And he always is cornering you. It feels almost like you don't belong in here too early, right? But you do. This is where you go. It's Bull Beast. Kill Bull Beast. Bull Beast is defeated. We're still listening to the mummy music because most of our players are here. Rick, there's Rick, there's Brendan Fraser on foul screen. Rescued. Looks just like him. One bag of gold left for Alpha 5. Unfortunately, I think they're in a bad way. I think they might be locked in. Lock is ready to move on. I hate to say that somebody with seven bags of gold is soft lock, but they have, I think, because they can't get that last stick of dynamite. The floor collapsed and it doesn't respawn. I meant what I said. Save state, man. Just in case. I do believe that Adamant has arrived at the town he's looking for, and the goal is 
the bottom of the next dungeon. Which I'll know it when I see it. That is surely it. Making good progress in Dungeon Explorer. Let's switch to that music, though. If I can find it. Yes, I can. <laughs> PC Engine TurboGrafx-16. Alpha has started over. I don't know what that rock does. Is on foul screen. I, I don't think you need it. It's it's optional. It's not used for anything, as far as I can tell. I don't know what it is. I think it just replaces your punch, which is meaningless uh, because your punch you can't lose to these guards. Uh, so having a projectile, whatever, it doesn't do anything. I don't know if Fal has access to the 8th bag of gold or not, but if he does, he's wrapping up. That's the question, right? Like, I haven't been watching everything they've been doing, so it's hard to say. It looks like they're still good. If they can work this out. I think this might be it for them. They might have it. They are! Okay, the mummy is almost completely cleared. I think all four players are going to do it, but um, Alpha really needs to move it if he's going to finish in time. Val is moving on. Ten minutes, thirteen fifty-seven, and sixteen twenty so far. The so Dungeon Explorer's challenge isn't very long, and you have a couple extra lives. It's it's a little tough though. It's an easy game. There's probably ways to heal and get extra lives. Adam and unfortunately game over. I don't know if they're going to use that password or not. They're allowed to. I don't know how much it will help. they want to. He's chosen the gnome. The gnome looks like somebody from Seventh Saga. I swear I've seen that guy before. The dwarf. He looks like the dwarf in Seventh Saga. Well, I mean, the first boss is only a couple rooms down in the first dungeon, which you have to go through anyway uh, to get to the next dungeon, but... I think they would still save time using the password. They're allowed. Passwords are legal in this tournament. If you earned a password, you're allowed to use it. You have to earn it, that's all. The reason why I'm letting them use a safe state in the mummy is this is a soft lock mess and it really should let you restart a stage, and it doesn't. I feel like that feature is an obvious missed thing, so given that. And it looks like Alpha 5 has gained the last bag of gold like they're all done. They just need to get to the door now, which is a free walk. Cannot soft lock the door. Yeah, they're finished. Everyone's on Dungeon Explorer in real time. No one passed on the mummy. Lock has taken the lead, but the game over, that'll change real quick. These, I don't know what the difference is in these characters. There is a difference. Uh, one of the differences I see immediately is that the gnome has more health than the fighter, who everyone else has, and who Adamant started with. I imagine they do more damage, less damage, different attack style, and stuff like that. The gnome has just four more HP per level, it seems like.
I think Locke's in the lead. Uh, I'm not sure where Foul is, but they're close too. Is that his first death? He seems confused. Oh man, you can get taken out really fast in this because there's no iframes. Contact damage is extremely bad. Block just died three times in a row. They might not be able to get out of this. Oh man, instant game over. Absolutely miserable. What is with what music? This song? Do you not like this song? I'm into it. Foul has reached the second boss. This is it. If he can win here, he's done with Dungeon Explorer. Getting cornered though. Got one down. They're not very tanky. They'll die. You spam at him. This is a burn race. He's done it. Foul has completed the challenge. Taking the lead. I didn't think that boss would get anybody. It's not as hard as Bull Beast. Getting to him though. That dungeon's nasty. It's full of contact damage nonsense. Time for Yonoid. Yonoid. Yonoid is an NES disaster. You die in one hit to everything. That bird? The fisherman? The water. Their goal is to win two pizza battles. There's a pizza battle on every odd stage, so one and three are the levels we'll have that on. Level three is a skateboarding stage. Level two is ice. Neither of those are going to be a joy. Through the stage, you have to pick up collectibles to win the pizza battle with. If they fail, they got to start over. They got to win the second pizza battle. Adamant's typing in the password, trying to get back into it here. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's just mean. It's a really bad game. Uh, you die in one hit, that's really the big one. The skateboarding stage will really highlight how bad this game is. I think the ice stage is worse though. 
We'll see if anyone can even clear them, but once you know what to do, I mean, these stages are mm, Mario 2, Mario 1 length. They're not too short, but they're over before too long, thankfully. The pizza battle takes a while. It sucks. It's not an interesting thing. Oh! The ground isn't actually there, and you're annoyed. I took a spill. I think players should just take their time with you, Annoyed. If you do, probably won't have as much trouble as you would expect for a bad platformer. It comes together okay when you, uh, when you see things slowly lumbering towards you that kill you instantly, you, uh, take them out way before they get you, because you kill them in one hit, too. Usually. Some enemies take five hits, but most threats can be ignored. And Foul taking their time this time a little bit more made it through the pizza battle. The goal here is to fill up your bar, which is much smaller, before they fill up theirs. And it really is simply a numbers matching game. Um, so he picked three and they picked two, so he gets one point. But now his three card is deleted. So they don't have access to the... That's the best card that he has, is three. The enemy has plenty of good cards. Now he used a doubler, he only has one of those. He used it on a two. It's four versus three, gets one point again. You could use it on a three and get six and use it against their one to get five points. That's the most value I think you can get in one turn here. Um, it's incredibly unlikely that you're going to lose this uh, because they need so many points. So, you know, as long as you play even mildly correctly here, you'll get them. Also, that pepper card makes him lose a bunch of points, which makes it even easier. Adamant's having a hell of a time with the second game. I think they're almost finished with it. They might have to pass. It's going to be the wizard this time. 14 HP. The pizza eating game takes forever. It takes so long. And you know you're winning the entire time. Just in slow motion, you're just barely getting it done. But you are getting it done. In time. Just one point at a time. I'm concerned that Val might not make it through the first battle here. I don't know what happens when you lose this. They only need to win the second battle, though. I don't care about the first one. If the first one serves as a tutorial, that's fine. Champion goes first. 
Yeah, I think if you use your threes and you don't get enough points, you need to maximize how many points you can score at once is the thing, right? Like, if you have the opportunity to get two or three points on something, you need to use it. If you don't do that, you won't pull it off because you just don't have enough cards. Adamant's done with Dungeon Explorer. They need to move on now. Will anyone else beat Dungeon Explorer? Is this going to hold everyone else up? They're all having trouble with the second area here. This nasty contact damage dungeon. Unsurprisingly, is holding up all the players except for Foul managed to clear it and took a huge lead because of it. Looks like Alpha 5 shut me up. They made it to the boss. Uh, they were the last one to do the mummy, right? It's a big deal for them to clear this. Still alive. I think they're going to get it. They have plenty of lives for this. Yeah. All clear. Alpha 5 has beaten it. This level sucks. This level's full of, uh, snowballs off the ice, and they just, oh boy, they're instant death. You need to, you need to really move slow here. It sucks. It's ice physics. Singles only. Anyone who plays you annoyed. <laughs> uh, this stupid ice boulder, though, it really sucks. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. <laughs> Jeez. The ice skating hockey playing polar bear thing. It takes five hits. I don't know why it takes five hits, but it does. This game doesn't have any checkpoints. You gotta do these whole stages in one go. <laughs> Damn. Oh yes, three continues. And I figure the ice stage will eat up most of them. I don't know what the hell the Noid is, man. One dollar coupon good towards the Noid's favorite pizza. See inside. Not sponsored by Nintendo of America. In the 1980s, clad in red, skin-tight, rabbit-eared bodysuit, with a black N inscribed in a white circle on his chest. Noid was a physical manifestation of all the challenges inherent in getting a pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less. Hmm. Man. <laughs> you could go back in time and be a comedy genius. She just took modern material to the 80s, I guess. What an abyss. What a wasteland. Lock very quickly cleared level one. Makes me feel like they've played this before. The biggest thing in level one is that the water is higher than it appears. It is totally submerging things where you can see the top of them. In any other Capcom game, or platformer really at all, they're pretty generous with the floor still being there. And I mean, when you think about it, it's not really submerged, it's slightly damp. It's like the water is just barely covering it, but that's since the death is annoyed. He can't touch water at all. So, and that fish.
<laughs> I feel like the players are going to learn a lesson from the first pizza battle and use their doubler very well in the second one on a three and get five points right away, right? That's what it's all about. You can win really quickly that way. These are breakable ice platforms if you stand on them too long. They're the donut blocks from Mario 3, essentially. Ice jumping with momentum. That's what we got going on here. I warned the players not to shoot objects in this stage. Just avoid shooting the shuffleboard dudes. What is that thing called that he's shoving around? The huge puck looking thing, I forget. But shooting it causes it to explode. Makes it very dangerous for your life. Uh, so I just told the players, try to avoid interacting with anything in the in the Noid if you can. It is a curling stone, yeah. That was almost done, and they got bared. And <laughs> they forgot about the ice. Man. The next level is much shorter and much shittier than this ice section. It's a skateboarding thing, and it ends with some serious jumps. But because it's a skateboarding thing, you lose your main weapon. You have melee attacks. Jeez. Oh, man. Oh, it's game over again on ice. Soon we'll have four players on ice level. It looks like the two on the left, yellow and pink there, Adamant and uh, Alpha, both understand pretty well a pizza eating game. And they're getting through it as quickly as you can by maxing out their own bar. Wrap it up quickly. My players are having a hell of a time at the ice stage. I was back to Waterland. The worst part about this is having to do the pizza battle again. I think Locke's gonna take a clear on Iceland here. Maybe. If they're fast, they can win this thing still. If they can pull off a little bit more, just a little bit further, a little bit more nonsense. I don't know why they're going left. Oh, they want that, okay. 
that checks out. Oh, that was close, man. I dislike this whole thing. There's goal! I see goal! Oh my god! Ice stage clear! We get to see skateboarding after all. Alright. Skateboarding sucks. You just can't touch some of the enemies in skateboarding. Other ones you must be jumping to kill. He's the doubler and wants it, I think. Yeah, that's what he's doing. That's right, if the birds fly into the bottom of your skateboard, you're dead. If you're jumping, though, and the same thing happens, you've beaten them. That's right. It makes sense. You just need to think about it. And why it makes sense. Mm hmm? That propeller-loaded football player who drops some grenades. Bows quit. Playing Yonoid. I understand that. Their time is 42.56. They're almost finished anyway. I think they won this. I don't think Locke's gonna beat this pizza battle in 30 seconds. So. I think if the stage didn't have so many dang enemies in it who are just immune to damage for some reason sometimes, I had a hard time killing the football player. I think you need the momentum boost to kill them is what's going on. You need to be shining with power to kill a lot of these enemies with the jump, otherwise only the birds die to it. Which is a bizarrely specific thing, unfortunately, and it's causing a lot of problems. Locke and Alpha are both trying to get it done. You are allowed to take your time in this, though. There's no timer, as far as I know. Um, well, I, there is, actually, but I mean, running out is not just, it's just not gonna happen. It's so long. I imagine the penalty for that is just the death, but. There's no auto-scroller, as far as I know, is what I mean. And so you can just go left and right and, uh, skateboard your heart away here. Block just ran into the fact that that football player doesn't care about damage. Hope they didn't game over. One last try. If they can get to the pizza battle, they've got it, I bet.
I'm not sure what the bar is. I think it's for sub weapons. Uh, no one's figured out how to get those yet, and I'll talk about that some. So you shoot open the big scrolls, and I think that's how you get them. And if you don't shoot them and you just pick them up, you just get ammo or whatever? I don't know. It's something like that. It's dumb. <laughs> it's weird. Ultimately, I don't think that bar matters because they're not using the sub weapons, and especially on the skateboarding stage, I don't think it matters at all. More of a concern for the first two levels. Box! Oh, Locke made that last hell jump! They're actually going to clear it! I can't believe not only did he make it, but on the first try, that jump is crazy. I warned them about specifically that jump. That jump is out of control, man. That jump is wildly difficult. They have two doublers, and they're gonna hit a big six here, so there's five points right there. Almost, almost half. That doubler's a big help. That's definitely the fastest way to do this, is doubling a three, using it when they pick a one, and just getting so many points. If they pick a three or a five or whatever, they're just wasting your time. You can't do anything but waste theirs right on back. He's getting impatient, gonna hit it with a six, get four points. Just a few more to go. That'll wrap it up in two more good ones. Yeah. Looks promising. I think it's over. Locke is going to take second place. Forty-seven, thirty-seven. to see who wins between Adamant and Alpha. <laughs> Alpha's passing, giving them a time of 51 minutes, dead even. Adamant is passing as well. For the time of 50-18. Wrapped up. Adamant takes third. see these standings. Five, five, two, and one are the scores so far. That's a big score for the top two players here. It's going to be hard to compete with, but we'll see. We're taking the top two, so I think there's still a chance mathematically for anyone to win this, but it's going to be a very specific circumstance.
going to remake this thing and we'll get started. I guess we can uh, put that music on hold, huh? The Hummingbird Pack. Still, ATF land after winning. Four kills. Daffy Duck in Hollywood. Crystal's ponytail. Rescue two pony pals. players are prepared for the final race. This is the last one of the tournament. Stealth ATF. Ten second countdown. <laughs> I can understand getting sick at this. They need to engage and destroy four fighters after taking off. That part itself is a little bit of a challenge. I died there. Successfully destroy all four of those fighters, which is incredibly obnoxious. Think fighting Star Wolf and Star Fox. Uh, 50 times worse than that. It's the same fight, basically, but just uncontrollable. They're always off screen. And then after that's done, you gotta land, which is its top gun levels of difficult.
And if they cannot pull it off, they're starting over. They need to do all of that in one go. Stealth ATF level one. <laughs> the only level we care about. If they hit the select button, they'll turn this soundtrack off and hear the humming of jet engines, which isn't any good. My advice for this was that they can do a lot of um, lips and barrel roll kind of stuff to catch back up to the enemies. That's how you get them on screen. As long as their altitude is like above 10,000, they won't ever hit that floor. Like, Foul and Lock are at the max of 50,000. They're not gonna hit the floor. I'm not sure if that affects your speed. Your speed is way too fast. These planes, they're never on screen because they, they just aren't. They're really... I've I played a lot of these kind of games on various consoles, and this is one of the worst ones I've ever seen for catching up to the enemy, who is mandatory. They're on screen at a frame rate of nothing. Like, one frame, they're there, and one frame, they're gone and you have to destroy them. The missiles don't really work. They sort of do, they sort of don't. Sometimes you're gonna gun them down. They just, they're just really hard to catch. You gotta catch all four. I was fighting one plane for like five minutes trying to get the last one and this is level one. <laughs> Lock has destroyed one nice. Bogies is the number left. That's what we can look at to see how they're doing. Lock is in the lead with no missiles left though. Missiles are the easiest way to get rid of them, but the gun will do it. It just takes a couple shots. The missile kind of seeks on them, sort of. If you can keep it locked on long enough. You can see where they are on your radar at any time. Doesn't help though, because it just it just doesn't. Lock down to the last one. Better at this game than I am, that's for sure. I gave them all the advice I could. Uh, we'll see how they land their plane though, because if they can't do it, they're gonna lose all their time. They might clear this in five minutes though, if they can keep it up. Just gotta get that last one in their sights, and he's gone. He's behind him now. Uh, he's in front of him, he's over to the left. He's behind him again. He's above him. There he is. Oh, he's to the left. He's behind him again. Oh. Games like this, the trick they use is to fill up as much of the screen as they can get away with, with HUD. And then they can say it looks pretty good, and it helps the frame rate. It didn't help it enough though. They could have shrunk this down 25% more maybe and gotten a little bit more. Uh, I think they were happy with the frame rate though. It doesn't work for combat, but it works for the ground, sort of. Almost. Believe it or not, this Genesis Flight Sim sucks. It's no good. This is one of my least favorite things to show up in the Gong Show. I hate them. There's so many of them. Dozens. Especially on the Genesis. Dozens. Just all at once. They're all in the G area too. The F and G. For fighters and uh, gunships. Look how hard this last one is to get! <laughs> when you have a group to, sh to fire out here, you can take out a couple of jets pretty easily, but... Once it's down to just a dogfight, one-on-one, you just can't do it. You cannot catch that last guy, he just won't be caught. Lock has done it, can they land though? I gave them full instructions on this. And as far as uh, to land, slow down with the B button and make sure your plane is level. Oh! Dang. Gotta restart.
That's five minutes down. No checkpoint. Saw one stage. They know how to use their missiles now, I think. Um, that's the thing, right? You might be faster restarting if you don't use your missiles, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, the ticket to the plane landing is very much, and Fallus doing it now, slowing the absolute crap down out of your plane and being straight on. I think Fallus gonna get it. No! Too fast! Dang. Nice jingles. <laughs> I don't some gaming. We're in the middle of a tournament here. We are seeing who can fly a jet plane the best. I'm gonna restart this OST. It's a good day to come to this channel, actually, if you're new, because in uh, five hours, on Sunday night, we do our big show. It's good. Is Locke already back on the landing? Wow. Good luck. They're going way too fast. Lock is dead again. Oh man. At least they got this down to where they can finish it up quickly. is upset that the bogeys are back every time. I think this is harder than Top Gun's Landing until you work out what you're supposed to do, and then it's very easy, actually. It's just, it's not telling you what's wrong. Like, he blew up and it's it's not saying, yo, you aren't straight, man. Yo, it's too fast. It's not doing any of that heads-up stuff. It's just blowing up, and it's not clear at all. That's why it's hard. I, I know why he blew up. He was going too fast. Um, really, it's just a matter of keeping yourself level and slowing down. You have plenty of room, plenty of time to do it. Locke is very good at this game now. It's gotten to the landing twice already, almost a third time. Five missiles left to take out this last one, too. This is very frustrating to play. It's just super annoying. Not being able to catch these damn dudes, these bogeys just going everywhere. Ah, oh, he's going too fast, no! Dang. Jams, man, these, these plain jams. Locke is having trouble getting that last fighter. That missile said no about going. Oh, there it actually did did work. Third try for Locke on landing this thing. Oh my God, he's going faster than ever. Dang. No one's gonna pull it off, I don't think. Oh man, it's been ten minutes. It feels like it's been an hour.
They have nine minutes left to land this aircraft. It's pretty close till Foul gets a second chance. Gateway, thank you for the big sub. Thanks a lot. The challenge, once you understand the controls, you can get it done in a minute. It's one of those. If you're really good at catching these jerks. I'm not. But we've seen Locke in a period of 10 minutes beat it three times, except for the landing. Almost gotten that last one, just got a plan to catch him, but it's not working out quite right. I got the landing on my second try when I did this. I figured out how disastrous it was. I knew the landing would be the hardest part though. Foul's second or third try at this? I think second. Off and blew up. Dang. Bowls. Oh, ah, it's too fast. Dang. There's only six and a half minutes remaining of Stealth ATF. Will anyone beat stage one? Author Blues, thanks for the host. We are watching and feel free to join me if you know any of these games. The end of Mystery Tournament Part 1 here. We'll be moving into single elimination brackets right after this match is over. Right now, they are trying to land a jet plane and not succeeding. I want to check the game pack on this game, but I... I don't know what else to tell them. And even if I find any information, I won't give it to them. This NES aircraft simulator, man. Advanced Tactical Fighter. Crystal's Ponytail is amazing. I know all about that game. I beat it. We ran out of soundtrack again. We'll just play this jam. Adam is trying to land the plane. Oh my god, that's so fast. Oh no. They're pulling it off. Oh crap. Dang. Adam is taking the lead. He's done it.
<laughs> Locks trying to land. Faust taking off. Oh man. Dang. Locke is good at everything except for getting back on the ground after succeeding. Adamant and Locke need to team up. Let Adamant do the landings. Let Locke do the fighting. Daffy Duck is real bad. It's real bad news. If you thought Stealth ATF was bad, check out this Daffy Duck game. A different, different sort of thing. It's a Genesis game. You need to find TNT. It's scattered about the level. It's hard to find and you die to everything. And you're listening to this. The goal in this game is to find all the TNT and then find the wall that you use it on before the timer's up for each area. They need nine sticks of TNT total, I think. Something like that. Six to nine. Clear this dumbass pilot game. They're running out of time on it. All of Locke's attempts backfired so far. They're so close. They've been so close so many times. The game's just so picky about what it wants. The final attempt for Locke here. This is it. This is the last try we're going to see. That is a very slow jet plane. Is this good enough? You can't be too slow either. I feel like their descent is too fast. I think that's it. I think that's it for <laughs> Stealth ATF. Oh, Files get another chance. You have 10 seconds. Kyle did it, finally. Two people did it. Kyle didn't get any credit for it though, they're just too slow. I told them where to find one of the, um, the sticks of dynamite. This has definitely got a lot of problems in a way that you'll get lost kind of problem. This is a Genesis Daffy Duck game. Um, this is just level one and I fully expect the players to game over here a couple times. Like straight up just completely die. Because some of the cactuses do damage and some of them don't. And it's hard to tell which and some of the TNT is in incredibly hard to find. Some of these slopes shoot you directly down a pit. Um, definitely mascot platformer problems. No camera controls. 
Uh, you can look up and down like in Splunky, say, but it's zoomed in too far. You can't move the camera left and right, really. Unsurprisingly, I think Locke is extremely annoyed with the plane landing. Is yelling at me for my bad description of the controls for landing it. But I did the best I could with what I got. That's how you land a plane. It just doesn't work right. Man, oh, right down a pit. There's a lot of these Looney Tunes games. I don't think I like a single one of them. They're very well animated disasters. I don't think I can think of a single one that I like. You know what? I take that back. Bugs Bunny has some good games on the NES. There's two, and I like both of them. Crazy Castle and Birthday Bash are both good. They're both pretty good. And Tiny Toon Adventures, if you count that, is okay. It's not great. It's all right as a NES platformer. <laughs> I definitely don't enjoy the Roadrunner games. I enjoy the concept of them. This is such a labyrinthian thing that it's going to be nearly impossible to tell who's winning. They're either finished with the challenge or they're not. I think actually Locke is getting close to the end of it. I don't know about the other players. Locke's in the last section, I can tell you that. Lock is in the last two or three sticks of dynamite to collect here. One of them is obscenely hard to get, and it's it's so hard to get it, in fact, that I told them exactly what they needed to do once they found it. They need to duck and go through a wall that uh, looks like a real wall. Like, uh, Locke just did it there, but uh, that's not the right wall. <laughs> Damn, down a bit. And... Just like that, restarting the whole stage. You only have a couple lives. Gotta do it all in uh, one credit. Yes, the ramp to nowhere. Got me many times. It's one of the worst things in this, and it's it's stage one. This is stage one one. You can choose your stage, sort of. Not really. I don't know if there's only six stages in the game. Uh, there's six stages at the start you can look at, and you're only allowed to pick the first three. Which seems odd. As far as I know, there's no way to restore your health. I have no idea what all these freaking pickups are doing for the players. I think you can change your gun, and one of them is an invulnerability. The magic wand is uh, five seconds of no damage. I don't know what the heck the other items do. Looking at Alpha 5, trying to find the last one. It's gonna hoist the players, I'll tell you. This is, this is why I gave them directions. 
What I told them was, you'll have to crawl into a fake wall tunnel by holding down and heading left. They need to find out where that is exactly and grab that last stick. Alpha 5 is looking for it currently. I can tell. That's where I got stuck. I had to look this up. I had to actually go on the long plays and look at where the hell this thing was. Because I could see it visually. I died and found it. And I couldn't reach it. All of my exploration did not help me out. He's done it. Did you see that? <laughs> That's the stage. Fox done it too. And that is the end of Daffy Duck in Hollywood for those two players. I hate to play Crystal, Ponytail, soundtrack because you won't get to hear the guy nodding and saying good job after you beat each level it's really good if you haven't played this game you should you know what i'll find it on this long play yeah here we go you're gonna hear it here in a second Job. Hell yeah. This is a Kuso game? What do you mean? This game is great. This game is an adventure game for children. How do you... <laughs> Awful book. What the... I started playing this on the gong show, and people made sure that I beat the entire thing. They voted constantly to keep it running as long as possible. The goal in this game to find the gems it's open world to an extent you have a bunch of different paths you can go you need to find the gems and then take them to the part where the gem fits and then you can use them to free your friend that's the objective here we're looking for two two pony pals rescue wonder if i can find actual soundtrack for this doesn't seem like i can I'll just play some long play footage and you can hear some sound effects too. You can customize your pony. No one's done that yet. You can also set the soundtrack, which is just a generic version of various popular orchestras. There's a lot of thumping and horse neighing in this game. Four-way clear, what do you mean? Uh, it's a game that you can't really lose, as far as I know. Um, there's a boss fight every once in a while, but it's really easy, and also... I don't know, it just... It's got all the elements of a basic puzzle game. It's good enough. It does what it does, alright. <laughs> and that is the soundtrack for that. Well, let's play some, uh, Rondo of Blood. Alpha's rescued one pony so far. I'm surprised that anyone would consider it a bad game because it does what it does pretty well. It's just an adventure game as a pony. And you can customize the colors on it. What more do you need?
Alpha's done. 31, 41, really fast. This game didn't take him long at all. It took me longer than that. No one else has rescued one yet. I went the long way, I guess, compared to that, man. I was gonna fight the wizard. Rescue his buddy. Mission accomplished. There's one. I don't know how much RNG there is. But, um... You find the crystals... By solving these weird... Puzzles, like, uh... Like, eat the hay on a weight. And that's all you gotta do, and it's done. You got it. It's worked out. Pick the scarecrow, get ten keys. Use keys. Receive gem. Put gem in slot. Finish. That boss stole a horseshoe, what the? Okay, Locke has saved a horse. I've paid worse. I've paid sixty dollars for worse games. Like um, hmm, what's what's the worst game I paid sixty bucks for? Mickey Mouse capade. <laughs> uh, I know people don't like Dick Tracy. I do. Conan the Barbarian, though. Put that on your list. Sixty dollars for that. Oh boy. Uh, not the, not the MMO, the NES game. Much worse than the MMO. Tremendously bad. One of the worst NES platformers I've ever seen. Using a guide, you probably won't clear that too easily. You know what's funny is Conan the Barbarian's NES game actually is similar to this in a lot of ways. It's got puzzle elements and adventure game logic to it. With more combat. And that's not good. I wouldn't pay Fallout 76 if you played, uh, if you paid me to... No thanks. 35-17, foul is done. Taking second place. Alpha 5 gets first. It's Locke versus an Adamant here for the last pony rescue. They both have some gems. And they both have one rescued. It looks like Locke has done it. Thirty six, thirty eight. I do owe Adamant some time, but I don't think it's gonna. They're in real time. Uh, they passed on accident on the first game, but I think ultimately it's not going to matter. They're not done with Pony Quest here in real time. No one passed. That's why I know who the winners are.
Adamant saved some time on the first game, but not enough. I'm not sure where they lost that seven minute lead they had. Daffy Duck must have done it. Yeah, it was Daffy Duck. He took 1330 on that one. Everyone else figured out Daffy Duck in seven minutes or so. That was a really good song by Firas. Wait on Adamant here. I think this is it for them. They just need to fight this alleged boss. Forty-two twenty-seven minus seven minutes. trying to work out exactly what the times are here. Hold on a second. I need to determine who won this. Why is Locke's time? Did Locke pass on a game? Yeah, I didn't think anybody passed. Um, according to my math, Adamant won, but I don't understand how because nobody passed. It should be in real time. I'm trying to understand how that happened. Let me go back to the start of this. I'm just going to make sure that I understand. Because according to my math, Adamant should be barely ahead of luck. And that's obviously not what happened. I need to go back and see how long it was that they took on the first game. That's all. I have no idea what the hell he's playing. <laughs> okay, I don't know Adam at seven minutes. I don't know why I thought it was seven minutes I had them. More like four. So Adamant's time is around 38.27, something like that. And I have our final scores here. Val has seven points, Block has six. They're moving on. Alpha with three, Adamant with two. Uh, Alpha, Alpha with four, actually, Adamant with two.
All right, so we will be back online in three hours. No, four hours for Arcade Pit. Four hours and 15 minutes. I'll see you then, everybody. We'll see Val and Lockyera in the final brackets. Single elimination brackets are now ready to view. So if you want to, I'm going to open projections on those if you're interested in doing that little mini game. I accept predictions. They are open now. You can go to this link. If you would like to predict who will win each match up to the end. A couple of people have a pass just by pure luck. More than half uh, have a pass. Some people have to play a bonus game. And uh, that's just luck of the draw, I think, ultimately. Fahrenheit, Scorn Dan, Robo Termite, Kaon, Flaming Rock, Terravan, Chaos, Defrost, Shy, Gr Grumpmeister, Extreme Zero, Bow, Jello, Ninja, Ekami of Games, Arc, Time Stalker, Freeze Star, EI, Drastic Actions, Nighty, and Patty BS are in the first sets. First 10 matches. Once those are done, we'll move on to round two. The people who got a pass are already in there. A couple of round two games are already ready to go. The reason why it's like that is because we don't have an even number. You need an even number, and I mean a power of two. Um, so two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. We needed 64 players, not 70 something. So because we have 70 something, we have a bunch of extra people who have to play another round. We have 84, so we have 14 people, I guess, right? Um, something like that. We have 20 extra people, so that's why we have to play 10 more games just to determine who's in the single bracket elimination. So those 20 people got screwed a little bit. They have to play extra games. I couldn't do anything about that other than limit the number of players coming in, and I didn't want to do that. So that's the price we pay. No way around that. I'll see y'all later. I'm going to host over in the meantime. I'm going to find a retro streamer. Have a good day if you don't make it, but we will be back online for Arcade Pit in four hours, 15 minutes.